So when you think about deterrence in the cyber area, it's more like deterring crime in our streets uh, than it is deterring a single event like a nuclear attack. I'm Sean Lynn Jones. I'm the editor of International Security, which is a quarterly journal here at the Belfer Center at Harvard's Kennedy School. Today, I'm talking to Professor Joseph Nye, who is University Distinguished Service Professor here at Harvard. Professor Nye is the author of an article. Uh, it's called Deterrence and Dissuasion in Cyberspace. This article appears in the newly published winter 2016-17 issue of International Security. The article is now available online and in print. Joe, it's great to have you here today. Thanks, Sean. I wonder if you could start by just summarizing the main argument of your article. Well, deterrence is a well-known concept in international relations and international security. Uh, and we often think of it in terms of nuclear deterrence. But uh, many people think that deterrence won't work in the cyber era, that uh, there's just too much anonymity, too many uh, different actors, and that we can't have deterrence in this era. My article argues that, yes, we have deterrence, it just looks a little different than we've known in the past under nuclear deterrence. Can we deter many of these threats when we don't know who might be waging the attack, who we should be retaliating against, and whether it could be literally some guy sitting in his basement as opposed to a state where we know the return address? Uh, with cyber, you don't always know that. You can have an attack which would hop through many different computers and servers and use false flags. So while you think this attack looks Russian because it has Cyrillic letters in some of the instructions in the code, uh, that might be all the more reason for somebody to put it there because they want the Russians to be blamed even if it's not the Russians who did it. So it's very hard to get accurate attribution. But in fact, attribution that you need for deterrence is not the same sort of attribution you need for beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. And we're getting better at attribution, and we can often follow multiple hops between different servers back into the areas where we think an attack came from. So how would deterrence work in cyberspace? What are the mechanisms? Well, one of the problems we have is we have to realize the political process for deterrence and dissuasion of bad acts in cyberspace are more than just retaliation. Uh, in addition to retaliation, there can be deterrence by denial. In other words, if I can improve my defenses so much so that it's not profitable for you to attack me, that's another form of deterrence. A third aspect of deterrence is entanglement. If you are going to hurt yourself when you hurt me, so the Chinese hurt their economy when they bring down the web in the United States, that is an entanglement that has a form of self-deterrence. And the fourth mechanism is taboos or norms. Uh, we see this in areas like chemical weapons and biological weapons. Well, the United States is engaged in, in an investigation and a debate over a particular attribution question at the moment, and that is regarding Russian hacking and the 2016 presidential election. What does your article tell us about how the United States should respond to this particular event? Well, what I suggest in the article is that the threat of sanctions can make a difference. I think it's a good thing that President Obama expelled 35 Russian intelligence agents. Uh, but we have to make clear to the Russians that uh, this is not free. What's your advice based on your article to the Trump administration? What should it do to try to deter prevent, dissuade cyber attacks against the United States? Well, I think the most important thing that uh, President Trump has to do is to make sure that we improve our deterrence by denial. And that can be done by thinking of the of cyber as like a public hygiene of, of improving the defenses or making it harder. That can get about 80% of the problem for what are called the advanced persistent threats, which are major intelligence operations of a, of a major power like Russia, China, and so forth, 
I think it's going to be important that Trump follows through with Obama's sanctions. In addition to that, as the Trump administration involves in its uh, various trade initiatives, which seem to be uh, skeptical of trade, they should remember that there are side effects such as entanglement, which are giving the benefits in other areas. And on the final area of norms and taboos, I hope they'll pursue the work that's being done by the UN group of government experts, where the UN has taken up what was originally an American proposal to apply the laws of armed conflict uh, to the cyber area to avoid attacking civilian targets and develop norms which have been taken to the group of 20 in the UN General Assembly. Joseph Nye is University Distinguished Service Professor here at Harvard University. His article, Deterrence and Dissuasion in Cyberspace, appears in the winter 2016-17 issue of International Security. Thanks again, Joe, for being with us here today. My pleasure.